بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to this new episode of Women around the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Today, we will talk about two of the Prophet's daughters. May Allah be pleased with them. They are the th second and the third in order, in terms of age. As we know, Zainab was the eldest, and we talked about her in a previous episode, she was the wife of Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi'i. Then there was Ruqayya, followed by Umm Kalthum, and the last of the Prophet's daughters, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was Fatima. So today we are to speak, bi idnillahi azza wa jal, about Ruqayya and Umm Kalthum. Ruqayya, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, her mother was Khadija bintu Khuwaylid. So she had the best lineage ever. She's the daughter of the messenger and the prophet of Allah azza wa jal. She was born about When the Prophet was 33 years of age, so when he became a Prophet, she was seven years of age. That's a young age. However, she accepted Islam at that young age with the rest of her sisters alongside their mother. And she was a girl, a young girl, and a woman who was sought after because her father was Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He was the trustworthy, the honest, and the truthful. Everybody knew him and acknowledged this. Her mother was Khadija, the rich and honorable woman of Quraysh. So at an early age, Ruqayya and her younger sister, Umm Kalthum, who was a year younger than her, were both married to the cousins of their father, Utba and Utayba. And they were the sons of Abu Lahab the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. Their mother was Jamila, the daughter of Harb, the sister of Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, and the aunt of the Khalifa, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. So the whole community was interlinked. These two boys married these two sisters. But when the Prophet ﷺ became a messenger and announced it, as we know, the Prophet took the first three years of the Bi'tha in calling people in secrecy. He did not announce it. After three years, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to him to announce the da'wah to everybody. So he announced it. He called the people of Mecca, the dignitaries, everybody, and gave them the announcement to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and to abandon their idols. The first one to reject and stand in his way 
was his own uncle, Abu Lahab. He was so furious, so against Islam and da'wah, after being one of the biggest supporters and people who loved Muhammad as an individual, once the Prophet ﷺ declared Islam and called them to it, he became a fierce enemy of Islam. He tried everything in his possession to tarnish his reputation and to deter people from following or even listening to him until Allah Azza wa Jal revealed a surah condemning him, cursing him, sentencing him to hellfire. Allah says in the Quran what translates to, may the hands of Abu Lahab be ruined and ruined is he. His wealth will not avail him or that which he gained. He will enter to burn in a fire of blazing flame and his wife as well, the carrier of firewood around her neck is a rope of twisted fiber. This surah is known as Surah Al-Masad. It's a full chapter dedicated to Abu Lahab and his wife, condemning them to hellfire. Some scholars said that this surah was a clear evidence of the truth of Islam, of the Quran, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This surah was revealed and it could have been easy for Abu Lahab to play a game and say, okay, this surah says that I will be, I will burn in hell. Well, I embrace Islam. And to pretend that he embraces, embraced Islam and everybody would know that Quran is not true because it stated something and it, it was false. But he didn't, which indicates that was, that was a prophecy and it was a challenge. So when this surah was revealed, Abu Lahab went to his sons along with his wife and said to them, I will not speak to you. I will not have anything to do with you unless you divorce Muhammad's daughters. So the two boys immediately divorced the daughters of the Prophet ﷺ, which was something that Allah wanted to honor our Prophet ﷺ by detaching from such people. And Allah wanted to increase the humiliation of Abu Lahab and his children because of their kufr and their disbelief. By the way, Ruqayya was 10 years of age when she was married to her cousin, which again, not one, not two, so many women of Quraysh were given in marriage at a very early age. Amina, the mother of the Prophet ﷺ, was married when she was 13. So this was the norm that girls got married at a very early age because they blossomed physically and they were capable of catering for the needs of their husbands. When she was divorced, there was Uthman ibn Affan. Uthman was a young man, a rich man, a man who came from a very powerful tribe. He had kinship to defend him, and this is what mattered at the times. Your kinship, your family, your tribe, they can defend you, they can stand with you, they can support you. And if you had money alongside that, you've got it made. And if you were young and handsome, 
then every woman would look to have an opportunity to marry you. Uthman was among the very first to accept Islam. And these are one of the blessings and favors of Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, who managed to call so many people, youngsters and influencers, in a very short period of time. The moment the words of truth touched his heart and his hearing, he accepted Islam. Being who he was, he proposed to the Prophet ﷺ so that he would strengthen the bond with the Messenger of Allah And the Prophet ﷺ could not refuse such an honorable man, a man who came among the first to accept Islam. So he went and discussed it with his daughter Ruqayya, who felt happy and joyful that Allah Azza wa Jal replaced her with such an honorable man instead of that thing that was married to her and divorced her without any wrongdoing from her side. So she accepted and they got married. And all historians say Islam did not see a true love story similar to the story of Uthman and his wife Ruqayya. Though he was rich and powerful, his people did not like him reverting to Islam, nor that he got married to their enemy, enemy's daughter. So they started causing trouble to him. And this is when the Prophet ﷺ ordered him among a handful of men to migrate to Abyssinia. And the Prophet told him to take his wife with him, alayhi salatu wasalam. So they set off on their journey, which was to the unknown, a land they don't speak the language of. And they have to cross the sea, which they have never sailed on before. And she was pregnant. So they set off and traveled, migrated. She gave birth to his firstborn son, Abdullah. And Uthman was known to be nicknamed as Abu Abdullah. And they stayed in Abyssinia until Allah willed that they travel back again. And they migrated again to Medina. So they had two migrations on their CV. And that was a great honor at the time to migrate to Abyssinia and to Medina at the same time. When they went to Medina, subhanAllah, a lot of people died in Medina. And unfortunately, Ruqayya was one of them. She fell sick. And in the second year of Hijrah, which means a year and few months after they reached Medina, she got really sick. And it was the time for the Battle of Badr, when the Prophet ﷺ told the companions to go along with him to try to attack and seize a caravan filled with wealth and money that belonged to the people of Quraysh. So Uthman asked the Prophet ﷺ if he could join him, but he told him about his wife, Ruqayya. So the Prophet ﷺ told him that you have to stay with Ruqayya, try to nurse her, try to take care of her, and I will save your share from the battle as if you were participating. And this shows you how great 
Ruqayyah was in the heart of her father, that he prevented Uthman from joining the army in order to take care of her. And it's also a lesson for us to, lear to learn the importance of our spouses, of taking care of them, of showing them affection and love, especially at times of need. So many men, yes, I know it's their nature not to express their feelings, but they have no excuse not to give their spouses, their wives, the needed care, especially when they are in need for that. She serves you and your children and takes care of the house and cooks every single meal for you. And when she is in need for help or assistance, you simply look the other way. This is not how men, real men, behave. So he stayed behind and he tried his level best, but fate was quicker than his attempts only for her to die before the coming back of the Prophet ﷺ from Badr. And she died at the age of 22 on the second year of Hijrah. And she was buried in al baqir Now, Ruqayya had a second sister who was one year younger than her. And this sister was Umm Kalthum. Umm Kalthum at the time was about 21 or 20 years of age. After being divorced from her cousin, she did not get married. Now, she also faced the calamity of divorce at an early age. And this by itself was a trauma for any woman. She migrated with her siblings to Medina, lived her life in Medina. Of course, after all the years she spent in the house of the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca and also in Medina. On the third year of Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ noticed that Uthman had sadness in his face. And when he asked him, and this narration is mentioned in the books of Sirah, the chain of narrators may not be authentic, but it is a famous story that when it comes to Sirah, we're not that specific in authenticating all the narrations. So he asked him, what is it? So Uthman says, this calamity that had struck me, the daughter of the messenger of Allah died while being married to me and with me, and my back is broken. The chain, the link between me and you, O Prophet of Allah, of being an in-law was severed and cut. So the Prophet said to him, alayhi salatu wasalam, O Uthman, this is Jibreel telling me that Allah is ordering me to give you in marriage Umm Kalthum. On the same dowry you gave to Ruqayya on the condition that you treat her as well as you had treated Ruqayya. And Umm Ayyash says, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, I did not give Uthman Umm Kalthum except through a revelation from the heavens, meaning from Allah Azza wa Jal. So he married her and he lived with Umm Kalthum for six years and they did not have any children. She died in the ninth year of Hijrah. This is why some historians give Uthman the nickname of Dhunnuraini, meaning the one with the two lights, as no one had ever married two daughters of a prophet or of a messenger. And he was the only one who managed to do that. So those who praise Ali, 
May Allah be pleased with him. For marrying the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, which is Fatima, should praise Uthman double that. Because he married two daughters of the Prophet ﷺ. She died on the ninth year of Hijrah. And the Prophet was reported to say, had I had a third daughter, I would have given her to him. And it shows the amount of love and respect the Prophet ﷺ had to Uthman ibn Affan. May Allah be pleased with him. May Allah be pleased with Ruqayya. May Allah be pleased with Umm Kalthum and all the companions of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام هذا والله أعلم ونسبة العلم إليه أسلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين